Well, greetings, amazing students, and welcome back to this weekly reflection. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different. I think that uh, God always has his way of weaving right into our plans and, and uh, telling us where we need to be, as opposed to always where we, we think we are, right? So this week, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to respond to some of your comments um, that you have shared with me this week through class or your writing, your assignments, just about how you're feeling uh, this week regards to the end of the semester approaching, right? Uh, but first, what I'd like to do is let's reflect on this scripture verse coming to us from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. And this interpretation is going to come to us from the message this week. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, the one who raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, no trouble, no hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks, they pick us off one by one. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Folks, that came to us from Romans, right? So, what I want to say is we are officially entering or have entered into the final stretch of this semester. And I honestly wanted to take a moment to say thank you for the perseverance and the dedication you have shown this semester. This has not been easy, right, for many of us. And as we approach these final weeks, some of you this week in particular have expressed the toll this pandemic has had on you and your studies this semester. You've written about it, you've shared it with me through email, you've discussed it in class, right? And some of you have expressed this feeling of loneliness that is setting in, right? I can tell you, though I don't know if it would help you in this, in this moment, that this is normal. And I could tell you that even though it may not address your feelings today, that this too shall pass. Um, and those things, right, would, would all be okay. But I don't think that really would help or address the core of the issue, right? What I'm going to tell you instead are two things to consider this week. I'm so glad you told me, one, how you're feeling. I truly appreciate that and I'm grateful for that. And the second thing is I want to share with you is a, a, a phrase, it's you I like, okay? Now, some of you may be familiar with that phrase, it's you I like. I grew up uh, watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as a child, and some of you may remember a very memorable song that he used to sing. And I can remember that in my, my deepest sorrow, or in those moments when I was feeling alone, the lyrics to that song, It's You I Like, would help cheer me up. And so I'd like to share those lyrics with you now. I'm not going to sing them. I won't inflict you uh, that upon you, but I will just rehearse these these lines, right, of, of Fred Rogers' poem, It's You I Like. It's you I like, it's not the things you wear, it's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way down deep inside you, not the things that hide you, not your toys, they're just beside you. But it's you I like, every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new, I hope that you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you. It's you I like. As I became older, I realized that I shared a spiritual connection with this song. It's you I like is a powerful reminder to me of God's love for us. The unapologetic, unconditional, unwavering love that he has for us. God does not love us when things are good. 
God does not love our clothes, our bank accounts, or the cars that we drive, right? He loves us, for we are wonderfully and fearfully made. For all of our perceived flaws, quirks, mistakes, and imperfections, God only sees us. So I can't promise you that things will be easier or that you'll, you'll never feel alone. But if you're like me, you know, deep down in that very sacred place of your spirit, that you're never really alone. I would ask that if you are feeling lonely, please go to a, pli- a quiet place and center, right? Call out to God to speak into your heart and hug you, right? Like that loved one that you haven't seen in a long time. And just a reminder, as Paul writes, none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living nor dead, angelic nor demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Folks, I appreciate you all so much. As you wind down this semester, please be intentional about taking care of yourselves. Nurture your spirit the same way you've nurtured your mind in your studies this semester, and know that nothing can keep Christ away. Not quarantine, not isolation, not COVID. He's right here always. Folks, I wish you have a fantastic week. God bless. If you need anything, you know how to get a hold of me. Take care.